Hey, you found my video. Today I'm going to do a little walkthrough on Dolby Amos. So I just bought this uh, Bose Soundbound 900 recently. Uh, it was actually not that simple to figure out how to how exactly to get Dolby Amos working. So I figured I would do a video just to do an exact walkthrough uh, to help uh, everyone uh, um, you know, who has similar issues, right? Uh, so if you like this video, uh, please make sure um, you like and subscribe to the channel to help out the growth of this channel. So there's precisely four points I would like to go over today. Number one, what is Dolby Amos? Number two, uh, why did I buy both Soundbound 900s? Number three is, um, you know, so how, how exactly do you turn on Dolby Amos, right? There's actually settings in TV some bar and the media player that you have um, so i'd like to at least give you guys a concept of how to turn on enable the settings in each of the device uh, um, that way you can uh, go figure it out on your own settings uh, and and on your own, own, own device and number four is i'm going to show you a little bit of um, interoperability testings with my LG C10 TV and the DeBose Soundbar 900s with the Apple TV and Xbox Series X. All right, so number number one, so what is Dolby Amos, right? It's actually uh, pretty simple. It's just a spatial sound uh, experience. Um, so compared to a regular Dolby, uh, uh, Dolby Digital Surround Sound, um, it's more like a spatial sound experience. For this soundbar specifically, both soundbar 900s, if you compare this to the previous generations, both soundbar 700s, both soundbar 900s have two more up-firing speakers on the top. So if you're viewing the soundbar from top to bottom, you see two speakers, one on the very right, one on the very left. What it does is that it creates a spatial audio sound um, kind of experience, right? For example, if there is a helicopter flying in, in the, uh, the top, you can you can hear the sound coming from the top, and that is part of the uh, spatial experience. So it has two more up firing speakers, um, you know, on the on the regular Dolby Amos uh, soundbar. So number two, why did I buy those soundbar nine hundreds, right? There are actually two soundbar um, um, that are um, kind of head to head, both soundbar 900s and Sonos Arc. Uh, so the number one reason why I bought both soundbar 900s is because uh, because of price. Uh, both actually runs a promotion recently, where they um, they actually uh, lower the price by two hundred dollars. So the MSRP is nine hundred dollars US. Uh, and with the promotion, it was selling at seven hundreds. At the same time, um, Sonos Art was selling for eight fifty dollars with one hundred dollars discount. So they are selling at seven hundred fifties. So buying both Soundbar nine hundreds with fifty dollars cheaper than Sonos Art, it was a no brainer, right? But number two, actually, as you can see, um, I have a LG C ten TV. Uh, it's actually very hard to find a soundbar that doesn't block the TV. And with this uh, Bose Soundbar 900, it's actually sitting at a very, very low profile. So it's not blocking the TV at all. But whereas the uh, Sonos Arc is slightly higher, right? So that's always been a concern. And the last reason why I bought Bose Soundbar 900 is uh, because of the dialogue. So Bose, as you guys know, that it actually is famous of um, just making the dialogue, um, you be, be able to hear the dialogue very clearly. So that's one of the strengths, right? Uh, so you don't have to enable um, the uh, subtitle anymore. Uh, but one other thing I'd like to mention is that um, there's another data kit dialogue mode uh, with Bose Soundbar 900s. I actually find that by enabling the dialogue mode, you're actually making the overall sound experience uh, worse. So I will actually suggest not, not to enable the dialogue mode. By default, you can already hear the dialogue very clearly. All right, 
So, so number two, number three is uh, how do you tell that you actually have doping amos enabled, right? Um, so you don't you don't actually tell by using your ear because I can guarantee you you can tell. Um, physically listen to a, a regular five point one Dolby Digital versus um, um, Dolby Amos. So the number one trick is that you can uh, some some bar or receiver. Uh, there's a little screen uh, building to the device where you can see what kind of sound it actually is playing. Uh, with both soundbar 900, it doesn't have the options. Then the second um, option is that you can use a TV, the TV and sometimes the TV uh, has a menu that you can see what kind of sound you're actually playing. So let me show you on my LG uh, remote control, right? There's a three dots in here. So if I press on this, I oh, able to go into informations okay on the bottom left you can see what kind of sound is actually playing um, but let me actually show you guys by playing the uh, actual uh, Adobe Amos uh, um, content so you can see that it's actually working All right, so I I, uh, I think the uh, Ray Notice has Dolby Amos, so let's just do that. So you can see if you have Dolby Amos available, it would show Dolby Amos on the uh, on the title. All right, so we're just gonna do that really quick. Press on information, you can see on the the, at the very button it shows Dolby Amos, right? That's number. That's the second way of uh, showing that uh, you actually have um, Dolby Amos. And third way of showing that is actually by using uh, the app. Okay, so we are actually going to enter Reno this one more time. All right. So you can see from the Bose app, I can see that it's actually playing with Dolby Amos. Yeah, so it's that simple. All right, so number four, uh, I want to go to uh, interoperability testings. Uh, what are the settings that you, you need to do uh, to make sure you can set it up correctly, right? So number one on the TV. Uh, on the physical side, you want to make sure your HDMI is plugged into uh, HDMI port that has uh, EARC, EARC uh, labeled. Uh, usually only one port will have EARC labeled. The second thing is that, um, yeah, of course, you, you want to make sure your, your sound out is sent to uh, HDMI ARC or eARC. In this case, it's showing ARC. Number three, there's actually other settings you need to do. It's a very important part. Um, if you trying to find, if you go to the sound, right? You go to uh, additional settings. Make sure you turn down eARC. This need to be enabled, otherwise you are not getting Dolby Amos um, sound. This is very important, so make sure you go into your TV, no matter what brand it is, to turn on eARC in the settings. And with the Apple TV, it's the same thing. Um, go on to the settings, go to uh, audio, audio format, uh, make sure you select Dolby Amos, right? Uh, so that's it, uh, but I want to show you how, how to make the, the uh, Xbox work as well. So let's uh, change to Xbox. So you, you are actually be able to play the game um, in Dolby Amos. 
uh, if the title, the game title supports it. So in Xbox, uh, make sure the number one thing is that you need to download an app called Adobe Access. So go to the store and download Adobe Access. All right, once you're in the app, you can ignore it by pressing Y. Don't, don't need to worry about that. So what you need to do is go on to, go on to product and make sure um, the second tab called Dolby Emos for home theaters that is showing ready to use. And Dolby Vision, uh, your TV should support the Adobe Vision as well. Uh, make sure this is uh, ready to use. And this is what all you need to ensure. But actually, I found a, a, a very specific bug with my uh, particular setup. So I have LG C10, both soundbar 900s, Xbox Series X. Supposedly, if I play um, a demo in here, right? What I'm trying to see is that um, in, on this screen is showing Dolby Amos. On the TV menu is showing Dolby Amos. But if I turn on my Bose app, it's showing LPCN 5.1.2. So this kind of thing just made me nervous. Am I actually in Adobe Amos or not, right? So I actually found a pretty simple workaround, right? To make sure I actually in Adobe Amos. So what I need to do is that I press on sound output and I wanted to show, change to internal TV speaker first. Then you can see Adobe Vision, Adobe Amos on the top, right? You only see Adobe Amos on top right with the internal TV speakers. Then you quickly change this back to HDMI arc. All right. Then I'm able to see Adobe Amos on the Bose app as well as the TV menu finally. Let me show you the TV menu to make sure that it works. Yeah, you see, Adobe Amos it works. So I think this is a specific um, bug to my particular setup, right? Where I have to quickly uh, toggle between the internal TV speaker and and to the HDMI arc uh, to overcome to work around this bug. But now I can ensure that I am indeed playing Adobe Amos, right? So so I hope uh, all this tip is uh, um, is helpful to you. Uh, you know, it's hard to uh, get your exact setup, but at least you get the concept of how to enable Adobe Amos, right? You know, there's settings in the TV, uh, in your media player, and in your soundbar that you, you need to do. Just make sure you follow, you know, what this video go over. So in concept, that's what you need to do. Then you can be successful with your own setup. All right, thank you. I will see you in the next video.